Okay, we've got a gradient sky, and we've got a cutout of our creature, and now we're going to start compositing more onto it. But before we even need to do that, we can use what we've learned from compositing to improve this. So what can I do to my cookie cutter creature to make it better match the lighting of my creature and of my background sky? Well, I can use levels and I can use dodge and burn. So my creature, notice its light sources. Not that I need to make my clouds match my creature exactly, but I can bring that out. So I'm on my background cloud layer and I'm going to use dodge and I'm going to make the exposure less than 30 so probably around 20 so it doesn't move too fast I'm going to only affect the midtones Better get extraneous sounds out of here. Okay. And I'm going to change my brush to be quite large, maybe around 100 pixels. So, I mean, if you think about it, 72 pixels is basically an inch on my image, right? And then 0% hardness. So I'll do about that. And now I can just lighten just the clouds in certain areas, just the midtones. If I dodge the highlights, it will very quickly go to solid white, which loses pixel content for me. So dodging and burning works really well on clouds. And you can kind of round it out and this is compositing. This is just bringing out what's already in the pixels. You're just making a direct adjustment to them. I barely notice a difference. Well, I want to do it pretty slowly because otherwise it moves really too fast and you can't control it. So you'll see the difference when I go back in my history before all this dodging. See, that's a big difference from that where it's very dark to that. Can you see that, Gideon? How much exposure do you put it at? Less, always less than 30. So I'm using a 20% exposure. Okay. And you said focus on the mid-tones, not the shadows? So where it says range as a tool option, have that set on mid-tones. Then you want us to focus dodging on like the middle colors or dodge the whole thing? No, you can dodge wherever you want, but you have it set so the tool is only lightening the midtones. That's because if you accidentally dodge the highlights, it will go very quickly to solid white and then you'll lose all pixel information, which is not what you want. But what's the purpose of this? So the overall project is to get a believable looking cloud that also suggests our creature, right? So this is how we can control the lighting of that cloud. And that can help us suggest the creature. So I'm matching some of the highlights that are on my creature now in the cloud. Now I can do the same thing with burn. Set the tools the same way, pretty large. 0% hardness, an exposure of less than 30, around 20, only doing the midtones. And I can burn, you know, the underside of the cloud. So we're basically setting the light direction on the cloud. So it can be a little bit more believable. Like the tips of the, of the claws here, it doesn't make sense that those would be bright white for the cloud. Clouds kind of fade out at their edges, depending on the lighting. And often they're darker on the bottom 
because light's coming from the top. So just, it's a reminder of how dodge and burn works. All of this is to help with our compositing. And we can use that throughout. Okay, the next thing is just our overall adjustments. So if I do uh, layer adjustments levels, I can up the contrast a little bit. It helps my cloud to show up by shifting my highlights to the, the left a little. What do you mean, image adjustments? Yep, so you go to image adjustments, and this one is a levels adjustment, just like we've been doing. And I can just tweak them a little bit. I might want to limit the darks a tiny bit. Yeah. And then I might want to dodge that tail because it's looking mighty dark. And I'm bu building a pretty subtle cloud on the sky I've chosen, right? So that I can just turn the sky on and off, I'm going to select all of my sky gradient layers, including the background, by holding down shift and selecting all of them and then I'm putting them into its own folder, right? So I can just turn it on and off. So I still have my full creature there in cloud form. It just has this sky behind it. And honestly, that sky is a little complex and distracting right now. So what I'll do is I'll just make a simple sky for the moment. And I'll just paint it with one gradation that I customize, and I'll just keep it all in the blues. So I'll make a pretty basic sky. When you were doing your burning, you didn't say what uh, parameters you had on the tool. So I always use the same. The same that I did for Dodge. I use a soft brush, so 0% hardness. I use it large enough so that it's clearly visible. So I was using like 130 pixels as a size. And I always do a, um, an exposure of less than 30. So I always use around 20. And that works for me. So I'm just painting a new sky really quickly. Just so I can see my cloud a little bit more clearly. There we go. And then if I want that extra complexity, I can always just fade that out. But right now I just want to be able to see my cloud. Okay. Now I start compositing. I'm going to bring in new clouds. It's a good time to save. And I open up my assignment for reference. And I'm going to bring in some challenging clouds they already have a lot of their own blue around them. So this is to remind us of how to composite. So it's a smart layer. Right? So the first thing I'm going to do is use the magic wand. I'm going to uncheck contiguous, right? I have a tolerance of 32. I have a feather of two pixels. All of those are good. I'm going to start selecting the blues and then deleting. But in order to delete, I'd have to rasterize it first, right? So I can right click and I can rasterize that layer and then I can delete away. As long as PhotoP can keep up with me. And then of course I can take my eraser, one of the probably the best compositing tool Put that eraser to 0% hardness. I want a super soft edge. Pretty large, probably around 100 pixels at 100% opacity. And I want to get rid of these hard edges. How did you get your cloud crop down so fast? Mine keeps selecting. Uh, I'm trying to get rid of the blue sky, but it picks clouds too. Well, that's why I'm now using my eraser liberally. I want to... Get rid of all the stuff I don't want. 
I don't want any of these, these hard edges. So we're just taking parts of clouds that are helpful. And you don't need to spend a lot of time cutting them out. You just want to get to the heart of them. And I don't want any of this land, right? So I'm going to lasso around all of that. So a big part of digital art is just learning how to do selections effectively, whether it's the lasso, whether it's the magic wand, whether it's erasing away. But you can see there are little remnants of that blue. And to really get rid of that, takes a lot of magic wand work. Kind of zooming in, selecting that blue. That's why I have contiguous turned off, so it will find that blue everywhere. Okay, so now I've got some, some raw material clouds that I can move around and use. And I really like this one here that's kind of erased away. And remember, I can stretch them. They're just like any other composite. I can even just take their opacity down a little bit overall. And what I'm going to do is use this as kind of a palette. You know how painters have a palette of paint? Well, this is going to be my palette of, of cloud. And I'm going to grab a chunk from it and duplicate it with Command-J. So it's on its own layer. And now I'm just going to take this chunk and move it where I want it, kind of sculpt with it. Maybe this will suggest my eye. And then I'm going to hit Control-T, and I'm going to warp it and stretch it, and that will soften it a little bit. Remember, I'm first going for a believable cloud. And then second, I'm going for something that suggests my creature. So I'm not a slave to the exact edges of my creature. Instead, that starts to look more believable. Then I can go back to my cloud palette, take another chunk, duplicate it on its own layer, Move it around. Where would this be helpful? Probably right along the tail area. Your magic wand gives you like such good selections of your clouds. Mine doesn't do that. It just depends on the 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 pixels in your reference, right? So the more contrasted the pixels, the easier time the magic wand is going to have. But you can always play with the tolerance levels of your magic wand. The higher the number of the tolerance, the more pixels it will select. So if it's not selecting enough, you want to up your tolerance. Now notice I'm still using a 100% eraser, but I'm using it pretty far away from the things I actually want to erase. And that kind of ghosts and gradates it. And once I know I don't have any hard edges anymore, then I can move to a lower opacity eraser. Well, I think I accidentally erased a layer I wanted, which was the eye. But I can do that again. So this is internal compositing. Remember when you take from a layer you already have and use a part of it in a new way. It's like creating a new composite. I encourage you to internally composite. You can just take this cloud stuff and move it wherever you want it. It's like um, cotton candy. You can rotate it. You can warp it. You can dodge it. You can burn it. You can change its opacity. You're like He-Man. You have the power.
And I just want to suggest